Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. Today, a detailed walkthrough of Sound Saw by Igor Vasiliev. Now, I'm looking here at it used in AUM, my host app, on my iPad. This is available for iPad, iPhone, uh, iPod as well. Does anybody even use those anymore? And also for M1 Max. And I've got five copies of any app by Igor to give away um, to subscribers to the channel. Details, as usual, are in the pinned YouTube comment. Uh, you can maximize your chances of winning by making sure you're following me on YouTube, Twitter, Threads, and Insta, because uh, the winners will be spread across those platforms, again, as usual. Details in that pinned comment. So um, let's just have a little listen here for a second without sound saw. So here I've got String Lab by Four Pockets, physical modeling synth, being played by an instance of Polybod by James Oldsai. Now recently I reviewed his Bounce Bod, and uh, recently also by Igor. Okay, so the Sound Saw developer. I uh, did a detailed walkthrough on his No Input Mixer, which is absolutely fantastic. If you don't know that app, or if you haven't watched my walkthrough, I strongly recommend watching that and buying that app. It's absolutely brilliant. One of my favorite releases of the year. So this sound saw is actually from, I can't remember, maybe like two years ago, something like that. And um, what brought me back to this app today, now we're not listening to it at the moment because it's bypassed, but you're going to hear it plenty in this uh, video. What brought me back to sound saw was that there's been a thread on the Audiobus forum about noise music. And um, I recommended um, to the poster this app as being absolutely brilliant for doing anything related to noise. And then I thought, well, you know what? I haven't done a walkthrough on this. I think I should do one on it because it really is a fantastic app as well. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's have a little listen. I'm just going to go through some presets that I made. I would like to point out, by the way, um, let me just pause this for a second. Um, so, you know, the app comes with a lot of presets and um, yeah, some of them are really, really cool. But one thing is uh, with this app, uh, gen generally, you're really going to get the best results by learning how to use it properly and setting it up um, exactly the way you want it every time. And also, it's really, really interesting to do some live tweaking of it. It's not the kind of thing that's always just going to sound good to just like stick it on and just go through the presets. I mean, you can do that, but you're really not going to get the best results. So really best to learn how to use it, experiment with it, and dial it in uh, every time depending on your input signal, what that audio is like. So um, here, these presets here are just all ones that I made um, today, which I'm going to use to demonstrate various aspects of this app. So all of these were basically made to, um, you know, sound fairly good with this particular little session that I've got going here with um, String Lab and Polybud. Uh, you know, not all of these are supposed to be like particularly interesting as uh, particularly interesting examples of how to use the app. Some of them are, but uh, you can see from the names. Uh, my real aim in making these presets was to use them to teach you about various aspects of the app. So you see, um, what you can hear there in that last one, for example, is one of the things that this app does really well, um, a kind of filtered distortion. So there are a few cool things about this app. Um, 
if, if we just uh, take a quick look at the interface, I'll just mention, first of all, a couple of the special things about the app. So first of all, it's got this noise section over here in the input section. And um, we can choose various types of noise. Now, um, we have a static noise amount and a dynamic noise level, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but here we've got our different noise types, analog synth, digital synth, console, tape. Um, okay, we've got input level here. And now over here, output section, output level, uh, dry, wet, mix knob. And um, one important thing to mention here, this uh, filter, so we can choose between low pass and high pass. And uh, we can dial in the frequency for that filter. Now, what you might think this is when you look at it and where it is and it's after the dry wet and everything, you might think that um, it's filtering the entirety of the output, but it's not. It's only for the um, input signal, but not, I see it's not in the input section. It's not filtering the input before it comes into the app. It's only filtering the sound of the dry signal um, when we mix it in over here. So uh, let's say we, um, you know, only wanted, uh, let's get that dry signal in. Okay, so look. You know, here we're just letting in some low frequencies. Right, so you know, this is for tweaking the um, way the input signal will sound when we mix it at the end with the dry wet control. So um, yeah, we've got a maximizer section here, and um, this maximizer is very. Uh, much part of what makes this app, I think, um, kind of unique. So the maximizer will basically work to um, control the level of the output, and you can use it to do things like, um, even if your input signal, for example, is, um, you know, small, plucky, sorry, short, plucky sounds uh, with a reasonably fast decay, uh, you could still set up your distorted sound to have uh, a longer decay time, right? So it can do things like that. And the maximizer will also really um, help to emphasize the sounds of the processed audio. So basically, we're processing it with distortion. Um, we've got down here four different types of distortion. Um, so these will all be controlled with this bit crush knob. And then we've got um, a feedback amount, uh, decimator, so like bit, cr um, bit crush, bit rate and bit depth, sorry, um, control. And here an overload thing. So basically, I think that's overdrive. And um, I mean, we'll hear all of these later in the video. Now, this is part of what's really cool. So. Uh, we've got a filter section here, and we've got band pass, notch, low pass, and high pass. Uh, we can also uh, emphasize the bass if we want, and that can be really, really cool for sound design. We'll hear examples of that later. Uh, so here we've got, it depends on the filter type. For example, when it's a band pass or notch filter, then this knob um, controls the width. And when it's low pass and high pass, the snob controls the resonance amount of the resonant filter. Okay, so here we're just setting our um, frequency for the filter effect. And here, um, okay, we've got an envelope follower section for the filter here. And we can control how much, you know, that will affect the filter. Um, we've got control over stuff like uh, when the envelope follower will 
kick in and what its attack and release times will be and so on. Here we can control the curves for the attack and release linear, logarithmic and exponential. Um, and uh, we have here some different settings for this envelope that we'll talk about later in the video. Um, so yeah, you know, by Igor standards, this is a pretty simple interface. And yes, all of these things are just labels. None of them are buttons. Uh, there are no um, LFOs or anything built into this app. So it's a straightforward interface. Up at the top, preset section, a few controls related to that here. Uh, arrows to scroll through the presets. A variation thing, which is basically, and again, we will demo this later in the video. Um, it's a milder version of randomization. It doesn't randomize as many parameters as the randomize knob does. I personally find the randomize knob pretty much near useless in this app. Uh, I prefer to just use the uh, variation knob or um, dial things in by by myself. Um, uh, when I press the randomize button, it often just uh, generates silence or something that doesn't sound very good. But yeah, it's good that it has it, you know, and if you've got the patience, you might get good results from it. I personally find it much more fun with this one to dial things in myself. And because it's reasonably simple, you know, you it's it's got a slight learning curve at the start. You know, you do need to read the manual. Well, if you're not watching this video, um, I think some people anyway would need to read the manual. But um, yeah, you know, once you understand it, it's fairly easy to uh, understand how to get the kind of sounds that you're looking for. So it's flexible, it's powerful, and uh, there's not much of a learning curve to it. It's, it's really great, this app. So um, let's listen again, and we will look at some different things in the interface here. So let me grab... Um, Something. Okay, let's let's take this. So really, um, you know, we want to focus on the um, the sound of the distortion here, right? That's going to be the most interesting thing. So let's have a little listen to uh, what these different distortion types can sound like, and what happens when we play around with the knobs, and try and understand something about the relationship between the maximizer and the distortion as well, maybe. We'll also look a bit more at this noise. So um, first, actually, I'm just going to bring the input down and uh, let you hear the different types of noise that we've got. And of course, exactly how these sound will uh, depend on you know, the filter frequency and uh, resonance and filter type and so on. Okay, that's something easy enough to understand. So in the noise, sorry, in the input section, We've got um, static noise and dynamic noise, and the dynamic noise knob will basically control the interaction between the input level and the volume of the noise. We'll hear that in action a bit later on. Let me just click on this again. So let's change uh, distortion types around a little bit. So first of all, one thing I've noticed that's really nice is um, when we have this set to fractions, uh, we can get cool kind of glitching effects by just jumping around with that bit crush value. And of course, all these will also sound pretty different depending on whether the feedback's up or not. And depending on whether these things are up. Let's for now keep it 
with some feedback. So two um, bit crush algorithms, A. That's it without feedback. That's with tons of feedback. Now, if you put the feedback up very high, you're going to have to dial down the output and maybe the input a lot if you put the feedback right up. So when you're um, trying to dial in a particular sound, it can pay to go very slow with the bit crush knob because um, as the manual says, it's not that useful to think of this in terms of controlling bit crush amount because, um, you know, the whole character of the sound can change drastically um, with just small changes in values here. So basically with the bit crush knob, uh, just, you know, experiment until you get a sound that you like. But I do notice that... Um, wait a second. I do notice that... Um, there's a very noticeable difference when you um, go into these negative values compared to what the positive values sound like. These are more your typical sort of bit crushy sounds, aren't they? This gets really gnarly over uh, on the left side. So let's just compare um, bit crush B and bit crush A. Okay, so they're pretty different. Uh, one thing I will say, it's maybe a bit of a pity for um, live performance situations that you uh, can't, you know, you, you just have to like cycle through those options. In that sense, it works a bit like hardware would. And um, yeah, I mean, okay, look on a touch screen, you know, this could be a bit better implemented. You could um, press here, for example, and, uh, you know, get a menu and jump directly to the sound that you want, but it's not a big deal. Now here we got another one sound saw. This tends to be really heavy duty. Let's listen to that uh, fractions one again. I really like this one. So here, this is basically a single knob for reducing bit rate and bit depth. And so, you know, these two together and this overload and the feedback, you know, they'll all work together to alter the quality of the distortion. Now, when I change this, I might have to um, reduce this output. So let me just do it in advance. Let me, let me just put it okay, on the dry wet, fully wet. 
So I'm going to bring the output level down a lot. Okay, look, I'm going to bring up this input level a bit. This is beautiful, isn't it? Okay, let's um, pick another preset here. So, um, yeah, if you listen here, right? Um, okay, we can bypass the effect using this. Let's turn it on again. So you hear here this kind of pulsing rhythmic thing. So this is um, the envelope follower controlling the filter. Um, this section is one of the things that most people would probably need to read about in the manual to understand. So I always love having um, built-in manuals. It's very handy. So let's um, just take a quick look here. So the mode of the envelope generator. Okay, so single, this is just a single cycle envelope. I think that is um, fairly self-explanatory. Um, threshold, the envelope cycle is guided by starting and stopping the generator. Okay, so basically um, the envelope follower will only kick in over a certain um, level, okay, that is determined by the threshold amount. Now, um, repeat and continuous, yes, uh, you kind of need to understand these. I mean, even if you don't read this, you'll be able to get it by uh, just looking at when these buttons light up, um, the um, attack and uh, release buttons, right, because they will show you um, what the envelope generator is doing. Um, but yeah, look at this. Repeat. The envelope cycle is repeated all the time while the generator is running. <clears throat> continuous. The envelope cycle repeats continuously regardless of whether the generator is started or stopped. So basically, the continuous mode will not really pay any attention to stuff like uh, threshold. Right? So let's um, play around with that a little bit. So first I will just um, let's put it back to uh, repeat. Let's change it to continue. attack and release knobs lighting up so you see there how um, they're not lighting up let's change the sensitivity are you seeing now those are kicking in Very useful, we have the visualization of this. Now let's uh, change it to... Here we see the sensitivity knob, right? Here we're not getting any envelope following action. Now here in repeat, right, it's just doing its own thing. Actually, no, that uh, sensitivity note doesn't look like it's affecting it, maybe, I don't know. 
Ich bin nach. Um, let's change the attack and release levels there. Okay, so you can hear there we have the longer attack and release time there. And here changing the curves. like this one with the um, fast attack and release time. Okay, so if you're um you know, putting in uh, some kind of plucky type sound like this um, and you want to get a kind of pulsing rhythmic filtering effect, you're going to want to uh, play around with the envelope and filter settings quite a bit to get things set up the way you want them. Uh, now let's... Um so you see here in the filter in this one, turned up that bass amount. So hopefully as long as you're listening on, um, you know, decent enough speakers or headphones, you'll hear that making a massive difference. If you're listening through the iPad speakers or whatever, iPhone, um, I don't know, will you hear that bass or not? Okay, so here um, this sensitivity knob is just not affecting, right? Because it's set in continuous mode. But here the sensitivity knob will matter. how lovely the feedback is. So basically now that you've got, you know, a feeling for how everything in the interface works, we'll just go through some of these presets and play around with certain controls. Let's turn the maximizer off. Let's turn it on again. And again, we've got, you know, our indicators here for um, threshold and hold. So here we see that the threshold down here, okay, everything is over the threshold. So the maximizer is basically on all the time, right? If we start to bring it up here, see, because we've raised that threshold, We've got more audio that is not reaching the threshold and that audio is not triggering the maximizer, right? Uh, let's change the attack, hold and release. So now we've got short attack, um, no hold time and a short release. Now there we've got the long hold. 
let's try a short hold and a slow attack and a slow release. Bring that hold up a bit. Right? So... You see what I'm saying? Um, it's pretty powerful, this. So let's hear that feedback with different distortion types. And let's hear without overload. Of these kind of sounds. Okay, so there is maximizer off. Let's um, ramp all of these up. Turn the maximizer off. And, uh, sorry, on. Let's uh, bring down the threshold. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Powerful stuff. So we're looking at the envelope here, it's on threshold. Now it's on repeat, right? So this really makes a huge difference. Just so remember the continuous one, right, is the one that doesn't get affected by sensitivity. But repeat does. Okay, so here we're not getting any envelope following. And now it's starting to kick in.
Let's just try the randomizer. Actually, these results are um, not bad. I still tend to prefer dialing things in by hand, to be honest. Um, so let's just pick um, this one and see what the variation button does to it. It's a bit more snappy. This one sounds like we've got a bit more feedback going on or something. So notice with the variation button, stuff like the um, distortion type doesn't change. Uh, these things here are not changing. Right? Uh, in general, with both the variation and the randomized buttons, um, there are always some controls that won't uh, change, like the input level, um, output level, dry wet mix, and stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the details of exactly what gets changed are in the uh, manual, but we won't uh, bother going over that. Um, so, yeah, uh, super cool, super cool app. Absolutely capable of some really mad sounds. Uh, again, a couple of favorite things to do. Is really, um, I think, play around with uh, the envelopes. Fractions one really is very beautiful. <laughs> uh, with this bit crush uh, A set down here, it tends to sound kind of the same in every preset. I, do. I might be wrong about that, but that sounds very familiar. But this A and B, wow, they really are different. Okay, so I'll stop it there. I don't want this to get too long. Um, what a cool app, what a cool app. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give this a like, write a comment, stuff like that. Um, if you have the financial means, donations are always massively appreciated and really, really important because uh, honestly, YouTube does not remotely compensate me for the work involved in this channel, not, not even anywhere near what I need to be making. So if you have the funds, the odd donation here and there is really appreciated hugely. And remember to show your appreciation to Igor as well. Go and uh, give him um, a rating and a review on the App Store, for example. And like I said earlier, 
if you haven't um, checked out his recent newest app, No Input Mixer, I highly, highly recommend it. And I think that my walkthrough on that is deeply useful, really extremely useful. That's about an hour long because that is a much more complex app than this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've made it to the end, fair play. You must have enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, folks. Bye.